I think I've done this long enough to know that you've got to play in the lane that makes sense to you and you've got to stay in that lane as well. Whatever, what happens typically when you start to move out of the lane, and I said this to um, one of the younger traders the other day was, I said to him, the reality is sure, we can look at nat gas, we can look at wheat, we can look at all sorts of other things. But the reality is, if you go and fast forward to the end of the year and look at your, your income, look at your P&L from all the markets you traded, okay, maybe 1% is going to come from that wheat. But tell me, how much input did you give into it? How much focus and time and energy uh, did you actually give to it to make that 1%? Moreover, you know, how much opportunity cost did you leave on the table in your market? So there is something to be said for, I think you need to trade more than one market. But I think equally, you need to realize that your one person was one but one one level of capacity to absorb and understand things. So there is a limit to how much you want to take on. Um, and I think second to that, I think what sort of matches nicely to that is I think traders typically nowadays, if you look at a lot of their charts, my goodness, they're looking at a lot of things. Okay, there's there's profiles, there's footprints, there's moving averages, there's all sorts of things going on on these charts. And the reality is the more things you have on the chart, the more things you're forced to think about, the more conflicting signals you're going to end up having. Um, so yeah, you've really got to simplify it um, and, and dumb it down. I think that's um, one of the messages loud and clear, dumb it down. You don't need to overcomplicate trading. Um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So did you said the maybe 12 uh, to 13, that's just like the most liquid futures, what you keep your eye on. Was this something that you, um, I'd be interested in your perspective on this. Did you grow into keeping your eye on that many products? You said you need to trade more than one. And I would be interested in what you think about this dynamic. Is it better for newer traders to have um, fewer products that they watch and try to master how those products move very intricately, maybe even one product at the beginning? Or is it better to try and master a few of these setups and then spread those setups over you know, more products? Yeah, I think the, um, so how we started, we had one product that was a German Bund trader uh, and we weren't allowed anything more than one product. And the reason they did do it that was they wanted us to learn uh, fundamentals and foundations. By fundamentals, I don't mean you know macroeconomics. What I mean is they wanted us to learn the fundamentals of trading, things like liquidity, volatility, all these sorts of things. So the focus for us on day one was learn the baseline understanding of trading. Uh, and to do that, you've got to ignore that there's so many markets and things are moving and just focusing on one thing. Um, and then over time, it was a case of volatility is volatility. It looks slightly different in different markets, but it, it looks the same on a chart effectively. Um, mm -hmm. So what we would then do is slowly just add one market at a time. Uh, and when you've got an edge in that market, fine. If you want to distract yourself a little bit more, then add another one. So that's how we did it. Now, what I would say is if you've got a structured play, okay, a setup you like, something that makes a lot of sense, you understand the pattern, you understand the execution, uh, by all means, I think it's perfectly fine to branch that out into other markets. Um, if you can find that edge, by all means, adopt it, implement it. Um, but again, I think just coming back to what I was saying, I think you must recognize that there is a limitation. There is a point where it's no longer worth you branching out any further because you do run that risk of just diluting the original strategies. Okay, I know. I, and again, I, I suppose it's not that there's a wrong and a right. I think everyone's got to do it their way. I know some very successful traders that only trade you know, oil and, and gold, and they do something very simple in it, and they make millions every year. Um, and then I know some traders that trade across 20, 30 markets, they also make millions a year. So it is very much about um, doing it in a way that makes sense to you. Uh, but recognizing, I think there is a limitation either way to to how much you can focus on. It's very interesting, even as you're just talking, um, a couple, I think, very difficult dynamics to get right in trading. One thing you said, keep it simple. And there's a, a simple version of trading that is just too simplistic. It's not sophisticated enough. You're just buying because this average crossed this average. You know, it's simple, but it's not sophisticated enough. And then there's these levels of complication where it's just not helping us make trade decisions anymore. And to find that balance of this is simple, but it is powerful and it is sophisticated enough, um, I think is very interesting. And then the, you just said, you have to do it your way. And there is not, this is the tough dynamic, there are a lot of things that you can do fine in trading. So not to say there's only one right way, but there are so many 
bad ways. <laughs> and you can fall into this trap of thinking, well, this is just what I need to be doing. And, and maybe what <laughs> you think of that is just completely, it's not actually going to work at all. And so doing it your way and having the ability to make that decision, but also making sure that, you know, your way is, is something that will work in the end. Um, yeah. These are interesting balances that I was just thinking as you said.